The Mount Sinai Otolaryngology Surgical Video Series presents Eustachian Tube Balloon Dilation. This procedure is commonly performed by members of our Neurotology, Rhinology, and General Otolaryngology Divisions. This video is edited by Zachary Schwamm. The surgeon begins with the right side of the nose. Immediately one can see the nasal septum medially, the inferior and middle turbinates laterally, the nasal floor inferiorly, and the sphenoethmoidal recess superiorly. A freer elevator is used to gently lateralize or move the inferior turbinate over to the side to make space to introduce the balloon. This is particularly effective in those with septal deviations. Anyone performing this procedure should be prepared to perform a septoplasty should the need arise. A posterior view of the nose shows the back of the inferior turbinates, the septum, coena, nasal floor, and soft palate. The eustachian tube is around the corner. The camera is then pulled back slightly to follow the eustachian tube balloon into the nose. The eustachian tube is identified in the lateral aspect of the nasopharynx. The cartilaginous segment has an anterior and posterior pillar, behind which is the fossa of Rosenmuller, a common site for nasopharyngeal carcinoma to develop. On this device, the guide wire has a soft blue tip which is slowly advanced to the yellow marker or until one hits resistance, whichever occurs first. One then inflates the balloon to a pressure of 12 atmospheres for a duration of 2 minutes. The balloon may watermelon seed out upon inflation. That's okay. The balloon is deflated and reinserted a second time and again inflated for two minutes. At the end of two rounds of inflation, one can see a wider eustachian tube orifice. An identical procedure is performed on the left side. First, the inferior turbinate is lateralized with a freer. The balloon is introduced into the eustachian tube, the guide wire is inserted to the yellow marker or to a point of resistance, and inflated to 12 atmospheres for 2 minutes. This procedure is repeated twice. Again, one can see a larger eustachian tube orifice when compared to baseline. 